Man, I'm bored of all of these free shooter games and Warzone weighs like half of my homework folder. What in the world do I play now? What? Paladins looks weird. I guess I'll give this a try. Hey, wait, this game looks a lot like Overwatch. These characters are similar. This dude looks a lot like Reaper. Die. Wait, what the fuck is this? Gra if this by any chance is you, I got one thing to say. P please, just stop. As a video game connoisseur and someone who has played and enjoyed both games, I can say that Paladins is not an Overwatch clone. But I can see why someone would think that way. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. I'm also going to go over both games and state the pros and cons of each of them. By the way, I'm Shadow and you should totally subscribe. We're getting close to 500 subscribers, which is just, just insane. A big shout out to anyone who supports me, joins the Discord server, or just interacts with my videos. Also, don't ask me why I'm making a video on two games that are considered dead by most of the community, which is not true. So the first thing people tend to cling on to when identifying the quote-unquote original and copy is the good old what came first. And you might be thinking that by looking at the announcement dates, everything becomes clear. Overwatch was announced in November of 2014 prior to Paladins, which was announced in August of 2015. So we got that sorted, right? Well, not really. First of all, I want to state that both of these games take inspiration from Team Fortress 2, which is considered the father of team-based shooters. And in February of 2010, High res the creators of Paladins, released a game called Global Agenda, also inspired by Team Fortress. It had a lot of unique and borrowed features, such as classes and different abilities for each hero, while also adding a sci-fi theme to it. The game would later become the stepping stone for the creation of Paladins. In 2016, a Reddit post was made by the co-founder of High res Todd Harris, responding to the allegations made against the game. The video would be way too long if I chose to include every piece of information, so we're just going to be focusing on the most important parts. But I'll leave the full post in the description in case you want to read the whole thing. A brief history of Paladins as response to copy slash clone allegations. Global Agenda, a class-based shooter slash MMO game, was started in 2005 as the studio's first project. The Global Agenda design was inspired by Tribe, City of Heroes, and TF2. The initial idea was how to make a City of Heroes type MMO game with real shooting. The game was later released in 2010 and we learned many lessons from it. Later on, Global Agenda was no longer generating much revenue even after some later expansions were released and we started looking for alternative games we could create. In 2012, we started another project named Aram. It was a fantasy-based Global Agenda PvP-like game and the first inspiration for Paladins. The style of the game was cartoon-like and fantasy-based. When Overwatch was announced, we were shocked and not sure what direction to take. We were already so far along with Paladins, but we didn't want to compete directly against Blizzard. We initially tried to find different ways to differentiate on gameplay, but the feedback from our tests, stats, and surveys showed that only a small part of our population was enjoying that style of the game. We created almost all of the Paladins classes and abilities using Global Agenda and Smite as our template. We used our Aram fantasy theme from 2012 and Smite characters as placeholders. As a last point, it would be impossible for a studio our size to clone Overwatch in a year, but the game did have some nice features that we decided to incorporate into Paladins. Killcam improved lag comp eliminations. He then stated a few proven facts. Most of the Paladins abilities can be found in Global Agenda, a game we made 10 years ago. Some abilities are from Tribes and Smite. About 42 abilities are very similar between Overwatch and Paladins. 36 of these abilities were previously in Global Agenda or Tribes Ascend. Six abilities were seen in Overwatch before Paladins. Almost every ability in Overwatch can be found in an earlier FPS game. Core mechanics first seen in Global Agenda versus Overwatch. Multiple classes, ultimates per class that build up, combination of shooter with unique class abilities, game modes for payload capture king of the hill, class structure with tanks, support, defense, attack, skins, emotes, and account slash class leveling. Following this information, he posted some reference links that even showed beta tests of some of the characters. Keep in mind that most of these tests were uploaded in 2012 and 2013, so unless there were some private information leaks between Blizzard and hi there was no other way for Paladins to copy Overwatch characters. So to sum it up, Paladins is a fairly unique game in the team-based shooter genre that just happened to be released at the wrong time and became overshadowed by overwatch but does this make it a bad game N no, no it doesn't both games have their pros and cons but i love them equally as much despite appearing similar at first glance they are played fairly differently let's start with paladin since the topic of the video is more focused around it keep in mind that i've played this game before back in 2017 when i was just a little child searching for any kind of entertainment not that uh 
much has changed. And I've just recently came back to it after playing Overwatch for a fairly long time, so of course I instantly noticed all the major differences that made this game unique in the first place. Loadouts are something unique in Paladins that really suit the game well. They are a set of different advantages that each of the heroes have, but what makes it even more special is that you have 5 cards but only 15 points to spend to level up each of them, forcing you to plan out your playstyle thoroughly. You can use it to maximize one of your abilities or spread it between all of them. There are way more characters in Paladins than in Overwatch, and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing, but if you rush out to create a lot of new different heroes, they might not always come out as good. Some characters are really boring to play as and others are really really cool. Another good thing about this game is that you don't instantly get all of the heroes. Instead you have to save up in-game currency to finally get the guy you've always dreamed of playing as. Each character also has their own mastery level and by playing as them a lot in matches you can get rewards such as titles, weapon skins and other cool stuff to show that you care about them. I wish I could say that the store and reward system is unique, but uh, it's not. Battle pass, in-game purchases and loot boxes, yeah I've never seen that before. Hello? Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. At the beginning of matches, you get to choose your hero, passive, and loadout. There's no role queue, so you can pick any class you want. Each time you respawn, you have a mount, which is uh, basically just a horse. But it does its job well, you get to the point faster than just walking on your two legs. In every match, you earn tokens by getting kills, moving the payload, capturing his own, and other stuff. You can then spend those tokens on upgrades that last throughout the whole match, such as healing when dealing damage or getting kills, running or horse riding faster, reloading faster, and much more. It really adds a bit of tension in matches and I think it's an amazing addition. The game modes are typical to games like these and they are not something special. King of the Hill, move the payload, point capture, and kills. And to be honest, video game developers are yet to think of a game mode that beats all of these. But please not battle royale. Oh wait, there already is one for paladins. Great. Moving on to Overwatch. I've always been fascinated by all the animations and storyline behind the game even before actually playing it. Fucking Dragons, Reunion, Last Bastion, so good. I admit I was kinda late to the party. When I finally got the game at the beginning of 2020, I was hooked. I really enjoyed all the interactions between the heroes, the voice acting, and the deepness of the lore. But even though there are less characters in Overwatch, they all have a connection to the lore, are amazingly designed, and are perfectly balanced. Except Sombra, she's kinda weird. Teamwork is something that I've seen more of in Overwatch. Watch, all the classes do their job. And I get that some people like random role cues, but I personally prefer the standard 2 tanks, 2 damage, and 2 healers. Ultimates feel more rewarding, and you can see where you rank in your team so you can brag about it in text chat. Once again, I wish I could say that the store in this game is good, but uh, it isn't. Loot boxes, yay! Just like in Paladins and other team-based shooters in general, there are casual, competitive, and custom game modes that all have the same payload and capture modes. But Overwatch also has their arcade in which different seasonal game modes air, and they are very fun to play whether it's Summer Lucio Ball or Me vs. Yeti Winston in the winter. Both games get updated really often, but recently the Overwatch updates haven't been that frequent and big since Blizzard are working on Overwatch 2. And with how it's looking right now, I can say that I'm pretty impressed. So there you have it, I went through most of the key features in each of the games and now you can possibly choose what to play and not be a little bit. I tend to see Paladins as a much more chill, cool, free game to play with my friends, and Overwatch is more balanced for it to be suited for esports. Once again, both games are awesome and I love them. Thank you guys for watching this video, if you enjoyed make sure to subscribe, leave a like, join the discord, you know what to do. Also, I'm missing out on videos again but I have an announcement planned. Real life problems suck and I've been dealing with them. But uh, time passes so stay chill out there and I'll see y'all later.